Now, this is nothing more than a profile constructed using a polyline. Now, let's say that we wanted to give it a thickness uh, using wireframe, uh, you know, concepts. We want to draw some lines to show a depth through this thing. Well, if you look at your cursor or your axes right now, you're drawing in an X and Y. Remember, Mike's left-handed rule is if you stretch your left hand out and only have your thumb and first finger stretched out, your thumb is a positive X, the Y is your first finger, and your arm would be the positive Z. Well, we want to draw a line in the positive Z direction. So let's go to the line command. Move your cursor to this point. Notice we have a running endpoint. Click it one time, and you're actually drawing from that endpoint. Our ortho mode is on, so that's why you're drawing straight lines only in the X and Y axis. Well, what's neat about this point filter is that we know that we need to draw another line going straight up in the Z value, so the X and Y point or value would be the same as this point, the one that we have highlighted. So if you hold the shift key down and touch the right mouse button, go to point filters, and notice that we can either extract the X, Y, Z value from any existing point on our screen, or a combination of two points, uh, the X and Y, or uh, I should say a single point, but the two coordinate values, X and Y, X and Z, or the Y and Z. So in this case, we're going to say, let's find the X, Y, and it says of what? Well, of the same endpoint. If you look down at the bottom in your prompt area, notice now it says it needs the Z value. So in the Z value, we're just going to type in point 75 and do an enter. Notice that the line is automatically drawn in the Z, even though our ortho mode was turned on. Let's try it again. We want to draw another line parallel to this bottom edge here, and it has to go up to this endpoint. So if you hold the shift key down and touch the right mouse button, select point filters, X, Y, move your cursor down to the bottom, click it one time, and down here now it says it needs the Z. Now we could type in point 75 again, or just do a shift and hit the right mouse button, and select point filters, Z, and we want the Z from this endpoint up here. And notice that it automatically constructs the endpoint from us. One more time, we can just come down here to the endpoint, we're snapping to that line, and we can hit the right button to cancel. Would you like to try that again? Let's do it. All right, I'm going to position this back down again. Let's get down this side. Let's go back to line. We want to move to this endpoint, so click it one time. You can see I'm drawing a line. Now, I want to be able to find the Z value of this point. All right, but I also want my X and Y to be the same as this point. So I'm going to hold my shift key down, touch the right mouse button, point filters, the X, Y, I touch of this point, give me the X and Y of this point, plus shift, right mouse button, point filter Z, I want the Z of this endpoint. And there it automatically draws that line segment, and now I can actually snap right to this point and cancel. It's a nice way of being able to build any kind of geometry using existing points as a filter by which we can extract either an X, a Y, or a Z, or a combination of the two.